Okay, thank you, Pastora Marifi. Pag ganun yung, ano eh, yung introduction, parang di mo alam anong susunod mong sasabihin, eh, no? So, sige po, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Pakibati ang iyong katabi with a smile. Sabihin mo, magandang umaga, good morning, buenas dias, ganyan-ganyan. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, alam ko po ng itong umagang ito, Katulad ng maraming umaga ngayong linggo na to ay napaka-gloomy ng feeling. Sino po sa inyo nahirapang bumangon kaninang umaga? Yung totoo lang. First service ka sana a-attend, pero second na lang, no? Kasi <laughs> ang hirap talagang bumangon this morning because of the weather. But thank God na nandito kayo ngayon, nandito tayong lahat ngayon. Because I believe may purpose si Lord para sa iyo at para sa akin. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, may purpose si Lord. Kung bakit nandito ka. Iyan. Okay. Sige po. So, samahan niyo ako. Tayo ay manalangin. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, that you are the God who sustains us. Salamat, Panginoon, na hindi mo kami iniwan at sinamahan mo kami nitong nakaraang linggo. Ano man yung mga pinagdaanan namin. And now, Sunday morning, we are here and we know that it is not an accident. You desire for your people to be here kasi meron kang sasabihin sa amin, Panginoon. So God, I pray that you would use me as your instrument, Lord. Speak uh, in and through my lips, Lord God, so that your word will be heard and it will uh, go into the hearts of your people and change their lives. Lord, ngayon nakatayo kami, nakaupo sa presensya mo. Alam namin na nandito ka, mangusap ka sa amin, Panginoon. Maraming salamat po. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So tayo po ay nagbabalik at hindi umaalis sa series natin na Fit for Life. No, tatlong buwan na, pangatlong buwan na nating pinag-uusapan ito. At ang hugot, paulit-ulit na sinasabi ni PM kanina, no? Ang hugot natin, why we are talking about this, is this. 1 Timothy 4, verse 7 to 8, sabi po dyan, Have nothing to do with godless myths, old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. So, ang kailangan daw sa buhay natin is for us to train ourselves to be godly kasi hindi yun natural. Hindi siya natural na nangyayari. So, we really have to train ourselves. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life, yung buhay mo ngayon, and the life to come, eternity. So, kaya very important talaga na matutunan natin to. So, we have been talking about this for the past three months. Unang buwan, may kinalaman sa training the body. Second month, may kinalaman sa renewing the mind. And ngayon, guarding the heart. Pero before tayo pumunta doon, humanap muna kayo ng partner. Kailangan talaga partner lang kasi one tsaka two lang eh. Okay, yung katabi nyo na lang. Yung katabi. Yung katabi. Lahat naman may katabi. Pag walang katabi, umusog para may katabi. Okay. Sige po. So yung partner nyo, Pili kayo, isa sa inyo, one. Yung isa sa inyo, two. Okay, go. O, madali lang yan. Laka-decide na kayo. Sinong one, sinong two. Okay? Yes? Okay, game. So, yung number one, kung ikaw si number one, ishare mo kung ano ang pinaka-natutunan mo sa Training the Body series. Okay? Number one. Kung ikaw si number two, anong natutunan mo sa Renewing the Mind series? Okay? Tig 30 seconds. Timer starts now. Time pressure, eh, no? 30 seconds lang, eh. A uh, graded recitation. Okay, kung first time mo umatend, makinig ka na lang din muna doon sa sinishare ng partner mo. Okay. Okay, tapos na po 30 seconds. Number two na. Number two. Ten. Nine. Okay. Time's up na po. Time's up, everybody. Yan, okay. <laughs> Napakabilis lang po talaga ng mga pangyayari dahil 
Kaya nga po, ang tanong ko sa inyo, yung pinaka natutunan, because if you have really learned something, yung pinaka, mabilis mong maaalala yan. Very fast niya masashare sa isa't isa. So patawad po sa mga nabitin na sharing, no? pwede po natin pag-usapan siguro after the service. But, uh, you know, reminding yourself of the things na natutunan mo is very, very important. Lalo na ngayon kasi tuloy-tuloy po yung series natin, di ba? Talaga naman dere-derecho, ratsada. So kaya kailangan, Tumitigil tayo, nagsispend ng 30 seconds para ikwento sa ating katabi kung ano yung natututunan natin. Okay? So, may natutunan po yung katabi nyo? May natutunan po ba yung katabi? Aya, ipaparating natin kay Pastor Bong yan. Para ma-encourage naman si Pastor at si PG, no? Okay, sige. So, ngayon pong month na to, August, this month, we are talking about the next uh, circle here, the red one na pinag-uusapan natin. May kinalaman ito sa guarding the heart. Last week, nag-start na tayo, pinag-usapan natin yan, at ang sabi, ang hugot naman ng guarding the heart is this. Proverbs 4 verse 23, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Nung ako po ay, ay much younger than today, no? nung medyo teenager pa ako, ganyan, favorite ko tong verse na to kasi nire-relate ko siya sa ay, very good talaga yung mga youth. Okay, so, parang pag una mo siyang tinignan, parang, uy, guard your heart, huwag ka munang ma-inlove, kasi estudyante ka pa, ganyan. But as I grew in my relationship with God, at habang nire-reveal ng Panginoon sa atin, yung mga tinuturo niya ngayon, uh, narealize ko na there are a lot of things na may kinalaman sa puso natin more than love life and romantic feelings. Kaya very important na we talk about this. Very important na we guard our hearts. Kasi lahat ng decision, lahat ng feelings, lahat ng mga uh, thoughts natin, yung mga ganyan, galing lahat yan sa puso natin. Lahat ng ginagawa mo, paano ka nagre-react, it all flows from your heart. Kaya it is very important that we guard our hearts. And last uh, Sunday, pinag-usapan natin yan. Bakit? Ba't natin kailangan i-guard yung heart natin? Kailangan natin siyang i-guard, sabi ni Pastor Bong uh, live by uh, telecast last Sunday, di ba? That the heart can be affected by evil outside and inside. Ibig sabihin, maraming ginagawa ang kaaway para yung heart mo hindi siya kay Lord mag-focus, kundi mag-focus siya sa maraming ibang bagay sa mundong ito. Okay, kahapon po sa ATC, mga batang sing liliit ng ganito, five year, six year, siguro six, seven years old, Super crazy sila sa Pokemon craze. Sa ATC, ah, six, seven years old na kids. So, you know, I can only imagine, I have nothing against that. Minsan niya naisip ko, gusto ko mag-download. Harang habang naglalakad ako, huli ako ng mga stuff. Pero naisip ko, it's just an example, you know. There are a lot of things in this world that can get your heart's focus. That can get your heart's attention. And even nga mga bata, di ba, huling-huli ng Pokemon yung utak at puso nila. So, ganun din sa atin. Kaya, importante na i-guard natin yung heart natin. Hindi lang yon, Pati mga laman ng puso mo, mga unforgiveness, hatred, anger, rage, o kung ano pa mang laman ng heart mo, can also affect your heart. It can also affect, you know, kung ano yung mga lumalabas sa bibig mo at mga decisions mo. Kaya, importante na i-guard natin yung heart natin, sabi ni Pastor Bong last Sunday. So, dahil natutunan na natin ito, no? para mag-guard natin yung heart natin, we have to know how it is. Kamusta ba yung puso mo? Kailangan nating malaman, ano ba talaga yung kondisyon ng puso mo ngayon? Tanungin mo nga yung katabi mo, kamusta ang puso mo? Okay, kita na naman. <laughs> yeah. So, alam nyo po, mga, na, mga ka, nanay at mga tatay, pag mga young people talaga tinanong nyo ng tanong na to, nag-iiba po yung itsura nila eh. There is something different. Okay, but yeah, we're talking about this. Kailangan malaman natin, okay, kailangan malaman natin yung kondisyon ng puso natin para mag-guard natin siya. Kasi, you know, our hearts are invisible. Okay. Yan. Okay. Ang puso natin, invisible. Hindi mo nakikita yan. No? Hindi mo, usually, hindi natin napapansin kung kamusta na ba talaga yung puso natin. The truth is, I, I, I realize na we go through life tuloy-tuloy lang. No? Gawa ng gawa ng mga kailangan gawin ng mga routines ng buhay natin. 
Na minsan hindi natin napapansin, hindi na tayo nagpipay attention sa kung ano ang nangyayari sa puso mo. Kasi it's very easy na, you know, ma makuha ng mundong ito ang isip mo, yung focus mo, na hindi mo na alam kung ano nangyayari on the inside. Magugulat ka na lang, malalaman mo na lang kung ano nangyari sa puso mo pag nakapagsabi ka na ng salita na hindi mo dapat sinabi. Pag sinagot mo na yung mga magulang mo. Kapag may, nagmura ka, o kapag, kunyari, let's say, super depressed ka na, hindi ka na makamove forward. O kapag ka, nagkasala ka na. Kapag may epekto na, doon mo palang nalalaman, doon palang natin nalalaman ay may mali yata sa puso ko. Pag sobrang pagod ka na, pagka super burned out ka na, pag hindi mo na nararamdaman si Lord, pag uma-attend ka ng church, tapos kumakanta sila lahat, di ka maka-worship, that's the time na you realize, may mali yata. Pero usually, too late na yun. Sa salitang lagi ginagamit ni Pastor, too late the hero na yun. Kasi wala ka nang magagawa, nandun ka na eh. Lumabot ka na doon sa dulo bago mo ma-realize may mali pala sa puso ko. And the Lord does not want that. He wants us to check our hearts. He wants us to know kung ano yung kondisyon ng puso natin. Kasi ayaw niyang dumating sa point na nandun ka na sa dulo kasi hindi, ka, hindi mo na alam kung paano ka aalis doon na nagkaroon na ng mga matitinding epekto yung hindi mo pag sa puso mo dahil mali na pala yung heart mo. Iba na pala yung focus mo. Masyado ka na palang focus sa mga bagay sa mundong ito. O yung mga nararamdaman mo pala, yun na lang yung iniisip mo. Tapos meron na siyang resulta na hindi mo na usually yung resulta, hindi na natin mababago. Pag nasabi mo na, hindi mo na mababalik. Pag nasaktan mo na siya, kahit na mag-sorry ka, papatawarin ka siguro pero nasaktan mo pa rin siya. Hindi mo na matitake back yun eh. Kaya nga, it's very important that we know the condition of our hearts para mag-guard natin kasi may matitinding epekto sa mga tao sa paligid natin at sa buhay natin pag hindi natin nabantayan yung puso natin. Ang nais ng Panginoon is for us to have hearts that are right before Him. Gusto ni Lord na ang puso mo nakadirect sa Kanya, konektado sa Kanya. Ang nice ng Panginoon is our hearts walang ibang tinitignan kundi siya. Yung, kung ano yung desire ni Lord, yun din yung desire mo. Ang gusto niya, naririnig mo siya. Gusto niya yung buhay ka in His presence na yung puso mo, nararamdaman yung nararamdaman niya. He wants you to be a person of compassion, a person of, na, you know, very forgiving, understanding to people. He wants you to be all the kind of person that He is. Mangyayari lang yon kung ang puso mo ay tama before the Lord. And guess what? Alam ni Lord kung kamusta yung puso mo ngayon. He knows. Ikaw siguro hindi mo alam. Before you came in, kanina, niisip mo lang, attend ako ng church. Pero now, as I speak and as the Lord is speaking to you, you are realizing, wait a minute. Nung habang nagsasalita siguro ako, naririnig mo si Lord, naisip mo, kamusta ba? Okay lang ba? Okay lang ba yung heart ko? Si Lord alam niya. And that is the reason why I believe He brought you here. Kasi gusto niya, malaman mo rin. God wants you to know how is your heart para mag-guard mo yung heart mo. Gusto ni Lord, malaman mo, tama ba yung puso mo before Him or mali? Para kung mali, maitama. Kasi ayaw niya yung forever mali yung puso mo before Him. Because He loves you. So God wants your heart to be right before Him. Dahil mahal ka niya. So because ganun yun, because ganun ang desire ng Panginoon para sa ating lahat, ang gusto talaga niya mag-guard natin yung heart natin, in the Bible, no, he, nag, nag-sprinkle si Lord ng maraming mga passages doon na may kinalaman sa kung paano mo malalaman kung kabusta ka o ano talaga yung nangyayari sa heart mo. At isa doon, yung pag-aaralan natin ngayon. So how do we know? If our hearts are right before God. Yung sabi natin kanina, importante mag-guard natin yung heart natin. Pero para magawa natin yun, we should know kung kamusta. Kung anong kondisyon ng puso mo ngayon. Okay ka pa ba o hindi? At pa, ah, dahil ang, da, ang gusto ng Panginoon, right yung heart mo before the Lord. Ang tanong, paano natin malalaman? How do we know if our hearts are right before God? Si Lord, He knows. Tayo, Lalo na if we don't pay attention, we don't know. Unless may mangyari na. Or unless, you know, walang mangyari. So, ibig sabihin, okay pa siguro ako. 
Pero very important na we know kung paano. And because God is good, He loves you. Sabi mo nga, God loves me. Okay, that's more than just a cliche. He really does. Mahal na mahal tayo ng Panginoon, kaya siya mismo magpo-provide ng kailangan nating malaman para mabantayan natin yung puso natin. Okay? And merong three indicators. Okay? Sa Tagalog kanina, tatlong palatandaan. Okay? Tatlong palatandaan na ang puso mo ay tama pa before the Lord. There are three indicators na kung nangyayari sa'yo, itong tatlong pag-uusapan natin ngayon, ibig sabihin, okay ka pa. Ibig sabihin, yung heart mo, kahit hindi perfect siguro, pero konektado pa sa Panginoon. Naririnig mo pa si Lord, nakafocus ka pa sa Kanya. Pero kung hindi nangyayari or nagsastruggle ka in all of these three areas or in one of these, then maybe the Lord is telling you something about your heart. So, ganda gagawin natin. Magcha-checklist tayo. Okay? So, i-check mo, kayo po, na mga nandyan na nakaupo, i-check natin kung Okay, kunyari, nasabi ko yung point one, check ba ako dyan? Hindi ako check dyan. Okay, so hindi ko naman nagpapataas. Sinong check dito? Okay, hindi na tayo magkaganon. Ha? Ano na lang yan, personal nating evaluation. Kasi the purpose is for you to know the condition of your heart. Hindi ko kailangan malaman yon unless you want to share. Okay lang. Pero ang purpose ngayon is for us to know, nasan ba tayo? Where is our heart? Nakafocus pa ba tayo sa Panginoon or hindi na? You know, it's very important. Kahit nga sa physical na, ano yun, na puso, I mean, importante na every now and then, sinecheck mo yung heart mo. Eh. Like, kunyari ako, meron akong mitral valve prolapse syndrome. Sa Tagalog, sakit sa puso. Okay. Pero hindi po yung nakakamatay, okay, mag-alala. So, yung sa katabi mo, huwag mag-alala sa kanya. Okay lang siya. Okay lang siya. Okay. So, okay la, dahil simula nang na-diagnose ako with MVPS, Uh, every year, we try our best na kailangan magpa-check up, kailangan malaman, okay ka pa ba? Baka mamaya, akala mo lang okay ka, tapos biglang, ay, bulagta. Ganon. So, kailangan malaman. So, ganon din dito. So, now, we are going to talk about the three indicators na ang puso natin ay tama pa before the Lord. Okay? Now, ganito. Habang dinidiscuss ko siya, habang ina-explain yung verses, uh, maybe, you know, you would think na, anong kinalaman yan? Habang nakikinig siguro kayo, mamaya, pag ina-explain ko, anong kinalaman yan? Ba, ba, anong kinalaman yan si guarding your heart? You might ask that question in your mind. Uh, I suggest, I strongly suggest, stick with me until the end. You will understand. Pagdating natin sa dulo, doon mo maintindihan, ah, yun pala yun. Okay, pero pag ka na sa umpisa pa lang, bumitaw ka na sa isip mo, yung hindi ka na nag-focus, kasi ano ba yan? Parang di naman related yung sinasabi ni Sister Swanee. Ganyan ba yun? So, stick with me until the end. And then we will all understand kung ano yung gusto ni Lord malaman natin this morning. Okay? Okay? Okay ka pa? So, yung sa katab- tanong mo katabi mo, ready ka na? Ready ka na? Yeah? Okay? So, before we go to the, uh, to the passage, let me give you a brief background about the book of Ephesians. Okay, si, Apost- si Apostle Pab, Apostol tuloy na, Tagalog version pa ako. Si Apostle Paul. Yan. So, ang sinulat niya yung book na Ephesians sa church ng mga taga-Ephesus. Okay? At itong church na to, ang pinaka-point ng book na yan is, the, the Apostle is uh, encouraging the believers, both Jews and Gentiles, na kailangan mamuhay sila in unity. Kasi lahat sila anak ng Diyos. Before Jesus Christ came, yung mga Jews, mga taga-Israel, inisip nila sila lang ang maliligtas. Sila lang ang anak ng Diyos. But Jesus Christ came, and then everybody pwede nang maligtas. Basta sumusunod tayo at naniniwala sa Kanya. So itong book ng Ephesians na ito, yun yung dinidiscuss ni Paul. Sinasabi niya na, kailangan kayong mga Jews and Gentiles, every one of you in the church, should live in harmony. Kailangan maging, maging united kayo as one body. Dahil lahat kayo, anak ng Diyos, you are part of the body, si Kristo, yung head. So, paulit-ulit niya sinasabi yan. So, in-explain niya, explain, explain, Ephesians 1 to 3. If you have time, read it para mas maintindihan niyo ito. And then, he goes to chapter 4. And then, tayo then we go to chapter 4. Okay? Chapter 4, verse 1 here. By the way, I explain ko muna yung verse and then I'll give you the point. Okay? Para hindi kayo malito, hinahanap niyo yung points. Ah, saan na? Okay, verse muna and then points. Okay, let's go to verse 1. Sabi ni Apostle Paul dito, As a prisoner for the Lord, 
Then, ibig sabihin, pagkatapos ng lahat ng sinabi ko from chapter 1 to 3, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. When he said calling dito, what he meant is yung calling to be part of one body. Yung calling natin to be part of the church. Yung calling mo ng bawat isang Kristiyano na mapabilang sa isang komunidad, sa isang community of believers. Sabi niya, live a life worthy of the calling you have received. At in-explain niya kung paano gagawin yun in, in the next verses. Sabi niya sa verse 2, be completely humble and gentle. Sino sa inyo ang mag-a-agree with me na ang pagiging humble ang isa sa pinakamahirap na utos sa Bible? Yes! Wow! Okay, so yung mga hindi nagtaas, humble sila. Okay, sige. So being humble is a very, very difficult, uh, you know, tuwing nakakakita ako ng ganitong, yan, yeah, wabas ang Bible, no? So, nakakita ko parang, humble yourselves before the Lord and the Lord will lift you up. Ang hirap naman yan. Be completely humble and gentle. Sobrang hira, parang kasi naturally, sa ating mga tao, sa ating mga, even if believer ka na, naturally, ang gusto mo, yung gusto mo. Makes sense, di ba? Kasi, ang pagkasi sinabing humble, ibig sabihin, you look to the interest of others above yourself. Unahin mo yung iba, bago ikaw. Madali, mahirap. Mahirap. Kaya nga siya command eh. Kasi hindi natin siya gagawin. Kung hindi sinabi. Kaya sinasabi sa atin dito, be completely humble. Unahin mo o isipin mo yung iba kesa sa sarili mo. And gentle. When you say gentle, ibig sabihin, kunyari, nagsasalita ka. Hindi yung nagsasalita ka na parang wala kang pakialam sa mararamdaman ng kausap mo. Na parang basta ikaw nasabi mo, tas ay, salamat na ilabas ko. Tas siya naman yung may bit-bit nung daladala mo yung kaninang binuhos mo sa kanya. No? So being gentle means na tayo, you know, the way we live our lives and when we open our mouth, we are gentle to others. Yung mga tao, gusto nilang kasama ka kasi you are a gentle person. Laging sinasabi ni John Ortberg sa Soul Keeping, it is a breathing thing to be with you. Pagkasama kita, nakakahinga ako. Nakaka-relax. Now, God wants us to be like that in the church. Sinasabi niya dito na we should be completely humble and gentle and be patient. Isa pa to. Madali, mahirap. Pag walang masakyang van kasi traffic, tas umuulan, o walang jeep, walang bus. Nung isang araw po, no, hindi uso ang jeep sa alabang. 5.30 ako nag-aabang ng jeep. 8.30 ako nakarating sa bahay. Ilang kilometro lang ang layo ng alabang sa San Pedro. 3 hours yung biyahe. Kasi walang jeep. No, hindi uso yung jeep. So, being pa- yung ganong klaseng patience pa lang, mahirap na eh. Diba? Maghihintay ka, pipila ka. You know, kunyari sa bangko, pag nakapila po kayo sa bangko, diba? Tapos yung ang haba na ng pila, isa lang yung teller, Talaga no, nakaka-stress talaga. So, it's very stressful, no? When you're asked to be patient, lalo na if it's related to relationships. You know, yung being patient with other people, like for example, if you are good at something, if something is very easy for you, parang ikaw, naintindihan ko na yan, alam ko na yan eh. Ikaw, ang dali-dali lang yan, di mo magawa. You know, parang, parang para sa'yo, iniisip mo, oh, it's very easy to do that. Pero some people, hindi ganun yun for them. And you are finding it hard to be patient with these people. Sabi dito, be patient, bearing with one another in love. You know, only love can make you a patient person. Or a humble and a gentle person. And sabi dito, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Pag inisip natin, okay, so saan ka papunta? At eh, swan, ay, saan ka papunta? Swan, anong, anong ipopoint mo dito? Paul is saying na kailangan in the church yung mga relationships natin, okay. Dapat we live in such a way na yung calling natin to be in relationship with one another in the church, nakikita sa buhay natin. Because the Lord said in His Word that, by, uh, that if you love one another, the world will know that you are my disciples. So, kailangan nakikita raw yung pag-ibig na yon dito sa, ano na, sa isa't isa when we are here in the church. And sabi dito, in-explain, di ba kanina sa verse uh, 3, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit. In-explain niya kung ano yung nag-unite sa atin. Yung unity of the Spirit is the one here in verse 4. In-explain niya Apostle Paul, kaya tayo dapat magmahalan sa isa't isa because there is one body. 
in one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. We are united by God, by Christ. So dapat yung buhay natin, makita yung unity na yun sa relationships natin sa isa't isa. How do we know if our hearts are right before God? Our hearts are right before God if we know how to prioritize relationships in the church. Malalaman mo kung merong mali sa puso mo kung hindi mo na pinapansin yung mga relationships mo sa church. Why? Kasi it's very easy to be in a relationship with people you are in a relationship with. Your family, you know, uh, yung mga circle of friends mo na talagang super close kayo. Or maybe your boyfriend or your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, your children. It's very easy. Kasi, you know, ano yun eh, parang dahil feel mo eh. Pero in the church, it's not that easy in the church. Kasi tignan mo yung katabi mo, kamag-anak mo ba yan? Kung may, kung may choice ka ba, gusto mo ba katabi mo talaga yan? Or lilipat ka na lang kaya nahiya ka lang or something. You know, the church is filled with a lot of different people, iba-ibang background, iba-ibang pamamaraan ng pananalita, iba-iba ng mga daladalang baggage bago nagpunta lahat sa RLCC. And it is hard to be in a relationship with, uh, with people na other than your family. Kasi yung family means, di ba, yung, mamahalin mo sila kasi pamilya mo sila. Minsan kasi wala kang choice. Pero matalas, kasi pamilya mo sila, mahal mo sila eh. Pero pag lumabas ka na doon, you know, some of us may be thinking, eh, ano naman, iniisip ko naman yung mga relationships ko, ah, si mama, si daddy, iniisip ko naman yung kapatid ko, ganyan. They are still considered as ikaw eh. Kasi pamilya mo yun eh. Pero pag nagmahal ka na ng mga taong walang kinalaman sa'yo, yung kasama mo kasi sila sa church, that shows that your heart is right before God. Kasi si Lord, mahal niya yung katabi mo. Tignan mo nga siya with the eyes of God's love. Yeah? Mahal ni Lord yung katabi mo and He wants you. He wants you to also love the person sitting next to you. God wants us to prioritize relationships in this church katulad ng gusto niya for the people in Ephesus. Gusto ni, gusto ni Lord na maging united tayo as one body in, in and through our relationships. And if this is happening sa buhay mo. If ikaw, honestly, when you check yourself, iniisip mo pa kung kamusta na yung ibang tao, hindi yung gusto mo, ikaw lagi yung kumustahin nila. If ganon ang mindset mo, if naiisip mo pa kung okay lang ba sila, may problema si, si yung LG leader ko, may problema. Kumustahin ko ba siya o hintayin ko siyang kumustahin niya ako? I mean, you know, when you start thinking of other people, if you are thinking of others, if you are still concerned with what's going on sa buhay nila, for someone na kasama mo sa ministry na dati kasama mo, tapos ngayon hindi na siya uma-attend ng church. If you are concerned, ano nang nangyari sa kanya? Dati nakikita ko siya sa tech. I mean, hindi ko siya nakikita, pero alam ko nandun siya sa tech. Or dati na nakikita ko siyang tumutugtog, o dati nag a siya sa upbeat, or dati kasama natin siya sa community. Wala na siya ngayon. Do you care? Do we care? If we do, that shows that our hearts are right before God. Kasi nararamdaman natin yung nararamdaman ni Lord. That when God's heart is breaking for someone, tas nagbe-break din yung heart mo for that person, that means you still care. That means okay ka pa. That means check. So my question now, sa'yo, do you still care about other people other than yourself? Are you part of a small group where that care and love is experienced or are you pulling away? You know, are you, do you bring yourself sa mga sitwasyon na nagkakaroon ka ng pagkakataon, kumustahin yung mga tao, alamin kung okay lang ba sila, or wala ka lang paki kasi feeling mo wala silang paki sa'yo? You know, at this church, I, I grew up in this church literally and spiritually, thank you Lord. And that, isa talaga sa mga desire ng RLCC, ng vision natin, is for everyone to be connected to each other. And we try our best. No, sa kanina, sa, sa Tagalog service, we say, sinisikap natin 
We try our best, but we are not a perfect church. Sometimes your LG members will hurt you. Sometimes your LG leader will forget to ask you kung okay ka lang ba, kamusta ka na. Sometimes your mentor, you know, may have something going on sa buhay niya, hindi, kanya alam, hindi niya alam kung ano nangyayari sa'yo. Sometimes we hurt each other. Sometimes nag-aasaran tayo, tapos naaasar tayo. Some, you know, there are, we are still normal people and it's happening in this church. But because of God's love, kaya natin i-prioritize yung relationships in this church. And if you are here and you're not part of a small group, I encourage you, sabihin mo sa tao na kilala mo, I hope may isa ka pang taong kilala dito bukod sa sarili mo. Okay? Kung meron kang kilala, sabihin mo dun sa taong kilala mo na you want to be part of that. Open yourself up, prioritize relationships in the church para makita mo kung paano ni Lord, uh, para makita mo yung puso mo that is right before the Lord and then through your prioritizing the relationships in this church. Okay? So, ang question, check or no check? Don't answer. I want you to think about it. Okay? You don't need to answer. Ang, kaya ang importante dito, ikaw sa sarili mo, alam mo. Okay? Sige, let's go to the next one. Verse 7. It says here, but to each one of us, di ba kanina pinag-uusapan yung mga unity, one ganito, one spirit, one father, ganyan, ganyan. So lahat isa. Kung baga pinoint out niya, naiisa tayo lahat. Now, verse 7, sinabi dito ni Apostle Paul, but to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. Yung grace na sinasabi dito is the ano, enabling power of God to use you. Yun ang ibig sabihin. Hindi. Yung, yung grace na dahil binigyan ka ng grace, pwede mong gamitin yung buhay mo for the Lord. God is the one who, ano yun, uh, to will and to act according to ano, His good purpose. So yun yung ibig sabihin ng grace dito. Sabi dyan, to each one of us. Ibig sabihin, lahat tayo. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, kasali ka. Okay? Lahat daw tayo, binigyan tayo ng grace ni Lord para magamit niya tayo sa body of Christ. We have been given grace as Christ apportioned it. Sabi sa verse 8, this is what it says, When He ascended on high, He took many captives and gave gifts to His people. So yung gave gifts to His people, ibig sabihin nun, the Lord has given gifts to the church na pwede niyang gamitin so that the church can accomplish its purpose. So sabi dito sa verse 9, inexplain yung verse 8, what does He ascended mean except that He also descended, si Jesus Christ yan, to the lower earthly regions. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Okay, so kaya siya nakaparenthesis kasi si Apostle Paul wanted to expound on what he meant by he ascended. Okay, so he was, he was pointing about what Jesus Christ did. But the point is in verse 11, sabi dito, So Christ Himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip His people for works of service. I'll stop there. Sabi dyan, binigyan ni Christ ang bawat church ng apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Katulad ng RLCC, binigyan tayo ni, ni Lord ng Pastor Bong, Pastora Gina, Pastora Marifi, Pastor June, Pastor Ebet, enumeration talaga tayo. Okay, so nabigyan, binigyan tayo ng mga pastor dito sa church na to as gifts to this church. Are we thankful for them? Amen? Yes, we are. No, Sobrang, sobrang nakaka-proud. Uh, si PB and PG together with PE has, has attended the GLS nito lang nakaraan as Philippine delegates. You know, how daming Pinoy. Pero sila ang pinadala ng Panginoon doon sa Global Leadership Summit. And it's a, it's a blessing to be part of the church na merong mga pastor na katulad nila. And the Lord has given this church pastors and teachers, apostles, prophets. You know, si Pastor Regina Propeta yun, as in. You know, talagang pagbalik niya, talungin niyo siya kung bakit. Okay? Pero you know, the Lord has given leaders to this church. Pero may, meron pang sinabi pagkasunod sa verse 12. Bakit ni Lord tayo binigyan ng mga pastor? Binigyan niya tayo ng mga pastor to equip His people for works of service. Ibig sabihin, lahat tayo kasale sa work of service. 
ang role ng mga pastor at ng mga teachers of the word is to equip all of us so that we can all serve the Lord together. Yun sa Tagalog version nito na mas malinaw eh, mas malinaw kalagay. So para lahat tayo ay maglingkod, ganun ka diretso. So ngayon, ngayon, translating it to you, kaya tayo may mga pastor para mag-serve ka. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, mag-serve ka. You know, our pastors, ang kanilang, ang kanilang uh, goal and mission is to encourage the church so that everyone will go, to, uh, go with us in fulfilling the purpose of God for this church. Bakit daw? Sabi dito, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Kaya ni Lord tayo binigyan ng mga regalong mga pastor at mga leaders sa church na to para lahat tayo mag-serve sa Kanya. At pag, pag tayo lahat ay nagsaserve sa Kanya, we will reach unity in the faith, tapos we will become mature attaining to the measure of the fullness of Christ. Maa-accomplish yung purpose ng church kung lahat tayo ginagawa yung parte natin kasi lahat tayo binigyan ng grace. Hindi lang siya para sa mga kabataan lang, hindi siya para sa mga nanay lang o sa mga tatay lang, lahat tayo. We all have a part in what the Lord is doing in and through this church and that includes you. Kasali ka. So how do you know if your heart is right before God? Your heart is right before God if in any way, kahit maliit lang o malaki, simple o extravagante, you are participating in the ministry of, the, of your local church. Alam nyo, nung mas bata ako than today, when I was, I don't know, grade 6 yata ako noon, hindi po ako sigurado sa timeline. Pero there was a time na wala pa tayo dito. I mean, wala tayo dito sa center. Nandun tayo sa Tayo Building, ang RLCC. No? So, ang Tayo Building, for those of you who do not know, it's a five-story uh, building. Five-story? Five Five-floor five building? Na super taas, walang elevator. Lakad. No? Talagang kaya ng time po na yon lahat ng RLCC niyan, payat. No offense to everyone who is not payat. Okay? Ano lang, just pointing out a fact. So, di uma, dahil, bakit? Kasi nakakapaya talaga eh. Imagine yung mag-church ka na, fit for life ka pa. Di ba? Akyat na hagdan, baba hagdan, okay? So, nung time na yon, uh, mas bata pa ako, and merong isang ministry na hindi ko talaga makakalimutan. Kasi kung hindi nila ginawa yung ministry na yon, walang service every Sunday. Ganito yon. Kada umaga, Sunday, gising kami ng maaga. Nung time kasi na yon, walang ano eh, hindi naman sa atin yung lugar. I mean, hindi natin nire-rent yung lugar ng buong week. Sundays lang. So lahat ng gamit na kailangan for the service, upuan, speaker, uh, gitara, microphone, everything we need, electric fan, lahat yan nasa bahay ng mga members. Most of it, pag mga instruments ganyan, nasa bahay nila Pastor Bong. So, yung bahay nila, Pastor Bong, dahil dati maliit pa naman si J.D. at si J.I., no? So, okay lang, takbo, takbo sila doon. Pero nandun lahat ng speakers, keyboard, ganyan, ganyan, at sa bahay nila. So, ganito yung ministry. Yung mga tatay, no, kaumaga kami, gigisingin kami na maaga kasi sabay-sabay kaming pupunta sa church. So, kasama kami na uh, pumupunta sa bahay nila, Pastor, para kuhanin ang speaker, gitara, etc. Pati ito, yan, yan, yung stand, ng projector, yung mga kung ano-ano pa, kinukuha namin lahat yon sa bahay nung, ni Pastor Bong at mga iba pang churchmates kung saan man nakakalat yung gamit natin. Tapos, lahat yon dadalin sa Tayaw Building. Pagdating sa Tayaw Building, baba lahat ng bata, takbuhan, no? Takbo, ano yung bata eh? Takbo, takbo kami, ganyan. Habang ang mga tatay, ginagamit ang mga muscle nila, para buhatin lahat ng gamit, no? From the first floor the, up to the fifth floor, baba ulit, may naiwan pa. Okay, baba ulit sila, akyat na naman. Buhatin ang speaker, buhatin ang gitara, buhatin keyboard, buhatin si Pastora Gina. Buntis pa pala siya kay J.I. No? Si J.D. pa lang maliit sa bahay nila. Okay, buhatin si PG, buhatin lahat ng mga bubuhatin. Ang tawag namin sa ministry na yon ay Buhat Boys. Obvious ba? Yan ang ginagawa nila eh, Buhat Boys. And yun ay napaka, you know, it's a very simple ministry na napakalaki ng naging epekto sa church. 
Because dahil ginagawa yun ng mga tatay, nakakapagsimba kami lahat, naririnig ng lahat ang salita ng Panginoon, na linakit nila upuan, may upuan. I mean, you know, there are a lot of things we can do in the church. Hindi lang yung mga mainstream. Alam niyo mga mainstream ministry? Praise team, tech team, ushering, yan yung mainstream kasi lagi mo nakikita. I mean, parang obvious na may ganon. Kasi yan yung lagi mo nakikita. But there are a lot of things na pwede natin gawin. Pwede rin kayong sumali sa praise team. Pwede rin sa tech. Pwede sa mga kung saan nyo pa man gusto. Basta para dun talaga kayo. Okay, tandaan natin, binigyan tayo ni Lord ng grace to do what He wants us to do. So may mga bagay na parang para ka dun, may mga bagay na hindi ka para dun. Tanggapin mo yun. Importante yun eh. Kasi may mga bagay na ako, kunyari po, ako, hindi ko kayang gawin yan. Pero ikaw, kaya mong gawin yun. Kasi iba yung binigay ni, na, na calling ni Lord sa akin. Iba yung role na binigay niya sa akin. Iba yung binigay niya sa'yo. Pero kung lahat tayo, gagawin natin yung role natin, the purpose of the church will be accomplished. And you will also benefit. Because you are part of this church. Plus, your heart will be right before God. Kasi iniisip mo rin yung iniisip niya. Yung concern ni Lord for the church, yun din yung concern mo. That means nararanasan mo, nararamdaman mo yung tibok ng puso ng Panginoon for the church. So for those of you na, you're, you're, uh, you know, maybe this is your first, second, third, or matagal na siguro mga buwan ka na uma-attend ng SWC and you've been part of RLCC, kasi hindi ka pa part ng ministry, okay lang. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, okay lang. Okay lang. We will not take it against you. I mean, hindi naman tayo dito all. Lahat ng walang ministry, labas. Hindi naman po ganun. Hindi po yun yung punto, okay? What I'm trying to say is, we should uh, be mindful of this. Na kapag ka we are using our lives for something bigger than ourselves, that means na ang puso natin tama before the Lord. So we are encouraging you. Kung wala ka pang, you know, whatever means of service, we're encouraging you, join us. Join us in the work of God in and through RLCC. Kasi hindi naman, dito kaya ng mga pastor natin. Kagaya ngayon, wala sila. Di ba? So, ibig sabihin, we all have to, we all need to work together para mangyari yung gusto ni Lord for the church. Kasi hindi natin to kaya ng sila lang. Hindi po kaya ng mga kabataan yung sila lang. Hindi rin kaya ng mga kananayan kung sila lang. At ganun din, hindi rin kaya ng mga katatayan ko sila lang. Kaya natin kung sama-sama tayo. Amen? Because we are part of this church. At pag ginagawa natin yon, our hearts, we will know na makaka-check tayo dun sa part na yon. Our hearts are right before God if we participate in what He is doing. Okay, and before I move on to the last point, may, may naalala akong isa pang ministering. Sobrang simple lang. And you may be doing this in your own life, you know? Kahit na wala ka dito sa church. There's this, uh, we have one member here, isa sa mga ministry niya na inown niya na talaga for herself. Itong ministry na to, pagka nakasakay siya sa bus, kakausapin niya yung katabi niya. Tapos siya niya ng gospel. Tapos invite niya sa church. Kasi di ba pag sumakay ka naman ng bus from Manila going to Pasita, you are sure na yung katabi mo taga dito, right? It's very easy to, I mean, it's, it's not very easy. Ibig ko sabihin, easy siya kasi alam mo, mai-invite mo to kasi taga dyan lang yan sa Pasita, Landayan, Muntinlupa, ganyan. So this, this lady, yun ang ginagawa niya. Isa sa mga ginagawa niya. Marami pa siyang ibang ginagawa, pero isa yon sa mga. Simple lang. So ikaw, isip ka, how can you participate in what the Lord is doing? Just recently, di ba yung ministry ng lady na yun, Uh, ganon kinakausap sa bus. Nung isang araw, nakausap ko na naman ulit dito sa church, yung isang in-invite niya na napunta dito dahil kinausap siya sa bus. Di ba? Galing, no? Nandito siya kanina for service. Yung in-invite, nandito kanina for service. Tapos sinabi ko din to. Tapos parang natuwa siya kasi, ay, oo nga, ako yun. Parang gano'n. <laughs> Pero alam mo yun, there are a lot of things we can do for God kung gusto natin gawin if our hearts are right before Him. Amen? Okay, so isip ka. Kung hindi ka makaisip, ask your LG leader. Okay, LG leader, what can I do? If you're not part of an LG, ask the person sitting next to you. Paano ako ma-involve? How can I, you know, experience that? Then again, no pressure. So, mas katabi mo, no pressure. No pressure, okay? 
we will wait until you are ready. Sa attend ka lang, okay lang yun. No, walang, hindi, ka, hindi natin mamasamain yan. But we are just talking about this for us to know the condition of our hearts. Okay, game. Next. Verse 14. Okay, then, we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Okay, so ibig sabihin nito, hindi na raw tayo magiging katulad dati nung tayo ay mas bata pa sa Panginoon. Di ba pag bata, kung ano sabihin mo sa bata, isipin niya, tama yon, Right? Meron akong sinutsuturan nito lang pong nakaraang linggo. Tinuturuan ko siya ng Filipino. Kasi ang salita niya, English. I mean, naturally, di ba, pagka mayayamang household, uh, English yung natural salita. Eh, may exam sila sa Filipino. Pinagsulat ko siya ng Tagalog sentence. Sabi ko, bigyan mo ako ng di karaniwang pangungusap. So, sulat siya, no? Tapos sa kalagay doon, umiyak ang, ang, ang sentence niya ganito, umiyak ang bata kasi nahulog ang kanyang ice cream. Parang ganon. So, sinulat niya. Say ko, sige, write it down. Sulat siya. Nakalagay. Umiyak ang bata kese as in K-E-S-E, kese. Kese, nahulog ang kanyang ice cream. Ganyan. Sabi ko, that's not kese. It should be kasi. K-A-S-I. <laughs> Spelling, you know? Okay, dapat kasi, hindi kese. Sabi niya, no, my teacher said it's okay to write kese. K-E-S-E, I want to write kese. Kese ng kese ang bata. Sa isip ko, Sabi ko, I know a lot of Filipino, it's kasi, not kese. But my teacher said, and my, when my teacher says it's something, it should be correct. Because if not, then we will all learn the wrong thing. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense, okay? So, ang point of everything, ang spelling ng kasi, kasi, okay? Hindi kese, okay? Kese ang spelling niya. So, hindi pa rin, uh, bottom line, hindi pa rin siya sumunod sa akin. Sumunod siya sa teacher niya. So, bahala na sila mag-usap. Katulad ng batang yon, she's a grade 3 student. Tayo rin, when we, were chi- when we were younger in the Lord, kahit anong sabihin sa atin, we think yun yung tama. Diba? We think na, okay, so kung yan ang sinabi, yan ang tama. Kese. Ganyan dapat ang spelling ng kese. Ganon. Pero darating sa point na as we involve ourselves in the church, as we love other people as ourselves, as we are become, becoming humble and gentle, habang nagsaserve tayo with each other, we will reach to a point na we will no longer be infants. Kasi we are growing and maturing in the Lord. Hindi na tayo, pag sinabi sa yung ganito, maniniwala ka na kaagad. Hindi na, hindi na ganun kadali kasi tumitibay na kung sino ka. You are becoming more like Christ dahil yung puso mo konektado sa Kanya. And then so verse 15 says, Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the head that is Christ. Speaking the truth in love. Isa sa mga pinaka mahirap o medyo struggling ang mga, mga tao sa church to do. Kasi, di ba, when we say speak, kasi, when, diba, when we say speaking the truth in love, ibig sabihin ito, kunyari, ang isang kasama mo sa life group, yung buhay niya ay hindi na pleasing sa Lord. Ayaw mong sabihin, kasi, anong mangyayari? Parang iisipin mo, baka ma-offend siya sa akin, baka mamaya umalis na siya ng church, baka magalit siya, ganyan. Pero we are called to speak the truth in love. We are called to do the hard things para maproteksyon na natin yung community natin in RLCC. So, hindi pwedeng parang kung ano na lang yung gusto ng mga tao, yun na lang. We should speak the truth and love to others. And I know it's not easy. Kasi kahit naman po ako, struggling pa rin ako minsan. Kasi syempre, iniisip mo yung relationship nyo ng tao na yun eh. Baka pag sinabi ko, ma-misinterpret ako. Baka pag sinabi ko, di niya naman maintindihan. So ayaw mo na lang sabihin. But here it says na speaking the truth and love, through that, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the head. Ma-accomplish natin purpose natin as a church if we speak the truth in love with one another. In your life groups, you know, in your, sa mga real talk natin dito, yung mga grupo natin sa mga campuses, sa lahat ng mga grupo ng mga nakakausap mo sa pagkakaibigan nyo at mga kung ano-ano pa sa ministry, we should always practice this. 
speak the truth in love. From Him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. The body of Christ joined and held together will grow and build itself up in love as each part does its work. Kung gagawin mo yung parte mo sa church na to, kung gagawin ko yung parte ko, gagawin nating lahat yung parte natin, then the church will benefit. And the Lord will be glorified. And our hearts will be right before God. Kasi we are doing what He wants us to do. May role ka. Say mo sa katabi mo, may role ka. May role ka. And you know, nitong week na to, sobrang pagod na pagod ako because of all of the changes in my situation in life and all of these tutorials and all of that. Tapos ang bagyo at ang traffic at hindi uso ang jeep at ang van at kung ano-ano pa. There are times this week na parang gusto ko na lang, pag uwi ako sa bahay, gusto ko na lang umupo, kumain ng chocolate. Tapos tumulala, bumili ng french fries. You know, may comfort yung sarili ko. Kasi pagod na pagod ako eh. Tapos gusto ko nang matulog. Ganyan. Ang dami kong pagod. Alam mo yun, you know what I'm talking about? Pag pagod ka na, you just want to do nothing. You know, walang kwentang stuff. Yun ang gusto mong gawin. Kasi ayaw mo na mag-isip, ganyan, ganyan. Eh, magpipreach ako eh. So, nitong week na to, there were, I think there was, yeah, there was one time na talagang, Alam ko, yun na lang yung oras ko kasi pag binadwa, schedule mo yung week mo. Okay, hindi pwede ngayon kasi may okay. So, ito na lang yung window of opportunity na to. This is the time I can study. Talagang I can focus myself, shut up, shut up lahat ng noise sa world and you know, just listen to the Lord. Eh, pagod ako. So, kain akong chocolate, no? higa-higa ako, ganyan-ganyan. So, nandun lang ako sa kwarto. Tapos, nung, so natapos na yun, siguro mga 30 minutes din yung ganun ko na tulala lang ako. Tapos wala akong ginagawa. Ibis na nag-aaral ako. So, super confession talaga to eh. Pero I need to say this. So, nung natapos na yung, yung time na tulala ako at sinayang ko yung 30 minutes ko, umupo na ako sa harap ng computer at binuksan ko na at nag-aaral ako. Pray ako, Lord, ganyan. Habang nagpipray ako, alam ko, dapat mag-sorry ako kay Lord kasi sinayang ko yung oras. So, inun, sorry ako, Lord, sorry, ganyan, ganyan, bla, bla, bla. Pero alam mo yon yung sorry na parang, papatawarin ka naman niya eh. Naitindihan naman ni Lord yan. <laughs> Pagod ka eh. Parang ganun, parang ganun yung feeling ko. But as I was reading this, the Lord spoke to me and He told me, if you don't do your part, the church will suffer. Kung hihiga-higa ka dyan, imbis na dapat nag-aaral ka in preparing yourself to speak to the church, to speak to my church on Sunday, the church will not benefit from my word. Kasi hindi mo maririnig dahil hindi ka nakikinig. Then you're wasting your time. So after hearing that, talagang super ano ako, talagang Lord, sorry talaga. So, sobrang sorry talaga, Lord. So I realized na ako rin in my, you know, mga ganong moments na pag inisip natin, normal lang naman. Pero kung hindi ko gagawin yung part ko, you know, you won't hear the word of God ngayon. Tapos walang mangyayari. But by God's grace, you know, I have, binigyan niya pa rin ako ng isa pa, iba pang time, hours to study and all that. And I'm here now and I'm sharing to you from a human experience, an imperfect human experience, na minsan we will be tempted not to do our part, whatever your part is. Gano kaliit, kalaki yung parte mo, hindi ka siguro umaakyat dito sa stage, pero God knows what the part na He has given you. Pag di mo ginawa yun, you are forfeiting the church from growing and building itself up in love. As each part does its work. So do your part. I say that as ano, you know, bilang classmate nyo, hindi bilang teacher na nagagalit. Oh, gawin nyo yung part nyo. Sinasabi ko yun bilang classmate kasi ako din po, kailangan ko rin gawin yung parte ko para mangyari yung purpose ni Lord sa church na to. Sa ating lahat. So the third one is, to know that if your hearts are right before the Lord, check mo, are you still protecting the community? Iniisip mo pa ba, are you still practicing uh, you know, uh, ways kung paano mo mapoproteksyonan yung mga kasama mo sa life group, importante pa ba sa'yo sila 
Nangyayari pa ba? I mean, are you doing your part sa LG nyo? Are you doing your part sa community nyo? Are you doing your part sa ministry nyo? Are you doing your part sa kung ano man yung grupo, or kung hindi pa man LG yan, yung fellowship nyo, kung ano pa man? Are you doing your part? Are you speaking the truth in love? Are you doing whatever the Lord has given you para ma-accomplish yung purpose ng community? Or are you just focused on yourself? Are you just concerned of your own concerns na hindi nyo na naiisip yung ibang tao? Are we just concerned about ourselves? Or about pagod na tayo? Or about whatever na nararamdaman natin? Check your heart. Check ba to? O hindi? So, after everything is said and done, there are three indicators. Tatlong palatandaan kung ang puso mo ay right before God. Nakatatlong check ka ba? Perfect score ka ba? 2 over 3? 1 over 3? 0 over 3? You don't need to tell me. But I believe na God's purpose right now, kung bakit po tayong lahat nandito, ay dahil ang nais niya, maintindihan natin, kamusta ka ba? Kamusta ang puso mo? Tama pa ba ang puso mo before the Lord? Because the right heart, is other-centered, not self-centered. You will know if your heart is right, if your heart is focused on the needs of others, on the needs of this church, rather than yourself lang. Rather than kung ano lang yung kaya mo, yung madali para sa'yo, yung gusto mo. The right heart, our right heart is other-centered, not self-centered. Dahil sa pagchutor ko nitong week na to, I realized ko na, I mean, I had to go back to some basic stuff na, kailangan, na inaaral ng mga elementary. No? So, basic math, basic English, basic science, ganyan. And I remembered one concept. Hindi ko na alam kung kailan to tinuro. Pero, merong, may, may tinatawag na stock knowledge. Eh. So, na-stuck siya sa knowledge ko. Naalala ko siya. So, you might remember this. Litmus test. I mean, litmus paper. Okay? Red litmus paper, blue litmus paper. Okay? So, para saan yan? If you want to test if a uh, liquid is acid or base, pag ginamit mo yung red na litmus paper at sinausaw mo siya dun sa liquid, pagka pula pa rin siya, ibig sabihin acid. Pag sinausaw mo yun sa tubig, magiging blue yun. So, baliktad naman sa blue. Sa blue, pag sinausaw mo sa acid, magiging pula. Pag sinausaw mo sa blue, blue pa rin. Okay? Bakit natin ito pinag-uusapan? Because I believe that the way you approach your relationships with people in the church is a litmus test to the condition of your heart. Malalaman mo kung okay pa yung puso mo. Depende sa kung anong nangyayari sa relationships mo sa church. Kapag may kinalaman na sa ibang tao, yung hindi na pamilya mo, hindi na ikaw lang. The, your relationships, our relationships in this church, here in RLCC, wag na tayong lumayo, dito sa church na ito, it is a litmus test para malaman natin, okay ba? Asidik ba? Base ba? Okay pa ba yung puso mo o hindi na? Because always remember, a right heart is other-centered, not self-centered. So right now, I want to give you this opportunity for a few minutes dito na bigyan ka ng opportunity na i-check yung heart mo. I mean, we don't always get to do this. Pag lumabas tayo dito sa kwartong ito, marami na naman tayong iisipin, marami na namang mangyayari sa buhay natin, marami na namang concerns. But right now, For a few minutes, I want you to do this now. Evaluate your heart. Other-centered pa ba? Or self-centered na lang? God is not here to tell you na, oh, kung self-centered yung heart mo, ang sama-sama mo, Kristiyano. Hindi ganun. God is not like that. But He wants you to know the condition of your heart para mabago mo yun para magawan mo ng paraan na mag-guard yung heart mo kasi mahal ka ni Lord. He does not want you to experience a life that is self-centered. He wants you to be other-centered kasi doon maka-accomplish yung purpose niya sa buhay mo. So now, I 
want you to just, you know, be quiet wherever you're seated. And the, the priest will sing to us a song. And habang pinapakinggan natin tong kanta na to, check mo. Check, check, check ba? Or walang check? And then just talk to God. Talk to God ngayon. As we listen to this song. 